Well, I actually got started in church planting uh, out of cowardice. You know, I took over a church, and uh, I know what that's like to take over somebody else's problems. So I thought, well, I'm going to go out and make my own problems. You know, and uh, but really, what um, what I found in church planting is, uh, you know, Danny mentioned energy. Yes. I found uh, how that breeds an excitement among the people that you're working with, and right. you know, companion to the whole uh, church planting scenario, uh, I believe. Uh, you know, a main mission of the church is to raise up new leaders. You know, you think about Ephesians 4. Yes. That our responsibility as mature leaders is to train those uh, right. who will do the work of the ministry. And so, you know, in church planting, that offers an opportunity to do those things together to give more opportunities for people to, um, you know, use the gifts that God has given them. It makes room for those giftings in the body of Christ. And that's almost like a side benefit yes. of uh, the whole church planting scenario. And, uh, of course, the, the main win in church planting is uh, winning souls. Wow. And uh, I think that what Christ sent us forth to do is to uh, win souls, get them baptized, uh, raise them up, and train them as uh, how to be uh, mature in Him. And, and so church planting just offers all that those opportunities to do what I believe we've been sent forth in the uh, in the world to do yeah now why is that why you know why I mean I know this is a simple question but why is it you know why is it that you hear with church planning that they they really do they they have that energy to win the lost what's What's the dynamic there? Why does that happen more than just even the local church? Yeah, well, I think there's a number of important factors there. Uh, just want to state, first of all, that uh, you've alluded to this, but it's absolutely true. Surveys have shown uh, without question that new churches uh, win more souls to Christ. In fact, it's, it's uh, really quite surprising how much more effective a small church is at mm -hmm. uh, winning new people to the Lord than it is uh, than larger churches that mm -hmm. are just more uh, invested in building their community rather than reaching out. And of course, you can right off the bat think about what it is that pleases the Lord, what He's going to get energized about also in walking along with you. But I think there are a number of real practical reasons why that's true. Uh, one would be survival. You know, yes, uh, yes. Danny and I both have yes. passed through very, you know, we've started small. You know, we didn't start with large churches. Yes. And, and uh, you know, if you want to uh, find a hungry pastor, put him in a small church, mm -hmm. you know. And his survival, the survival of the church oftentimes depends on him thinking outside of the box. How do I reach more people rather than just tending the sheep that, that you have at hand? Uh, I think it's easier to win souls and to get people interested in coming to something new. Uh, we live in America, I think, I think it's true everywhere, but I think you know, we live in America and people, Americans love to be a part of something new, something fresh. And maybe for them it represents a new start. Mm -hmm. Some of those that we may win to the Lord may have had a religious relationship with the church in times past. Perhaps they grew up in church and got disenchanted and and disengaged with the church as Danny mentioned through college or some other experience and then you know once they get into uh, having children of their own and experiencing life's challenges right. and they start thinking about it again uh, you know maybe I should give a fresh look at uh, going to church and that's they're not thinking necessarily about coming to Christ they just know there's something missing in their life and so they think of it in terms of well I've got to go to church you know and so for those folks, I think that uh, having a new church represents something that's easier for them to identify with. Uh, and uh, it's not as intimidating, or perhaps maybe in the new thing, they won't have to deal with whatever it was that turned them off from the old right. thing, you know. Right. And then that's our opportunity to be there and to be Christ with skin on and to touch them in some significant way, perhaps to answer the difficult life questions that, that they're dealing with uh, or just be there to love them. Many times they've been they've been beat up badly by life's experiences and we have that 
we have that opportunity to be there and to really love them. That's good. Now, Danny, you actually started, uh, mm -hmm. you just recently here started mm -hmm. another church. Mm -hmm. and, and I assume it's for that reason. It's, mm -hmm. it's you're actually saying, hey, as a church, as a body, we can be more effective. Yeah, tell us about that as far mm -hmm. as reaching a, really another community. Yeah, we, um, we just recently moved to, uh, had another church start uh, in uh, Rehoboth, Delaware, which is like uh, 25 miles from our main campus. Mm -hmm. And the reason we went into uh, that community was, was we found that we had a lot of favor in that community, but uh, people weren't willing to drive as far uh, as to get to our, our current campus. So we decided we would go to them and, uh, and, and really set up in that community. And, uh, and it's very, very exciting, you know, and I think uh, whenever you go into a community, you go into a community to try to understand the community, how the community thinks, and really go there to serve the community and love the community. And the particular community that we went to to start this new uh, church is a really sort of a, uh, I don't know what word to use other than sort of a classy community and they're used to things being done excellent with excellence and so we've gone into that community with with uh, trying to do everything with excellence and to really uh, appeal to that type of uh, individual and, and to not compromise what we're, what we're communicating but it doesn't matter how rich people are or where people live or what kind of house they live in the bottom line people are people and people yes. have the same needs That's right. and uh, they need to be loved they need to be encouraged they need uh, hope they need dreams they need vision so it's not for me it's not intimidating regardless of what socio-economical status anybody's in because everybody has the same needs so we've gone to really try to address uh, you know that community and speak to them and it's incredibly exciting. You know, we had a, a great start. We just started this last weekend. Had 120 people came. A lady was saved uh, that uh, came completely from the invitation of another person. What we've done to start this new church is um, we, we built our, our model on the story out of Mark chapter uh, 2 where uh, Jesus was had come home to Capernaum and all the people were in the house and they were all excited he was there. And there were four people that uh, when they heard Jesus was home, instead of thinking, boy, I want to get to that house so I can get a good seat to hear Jesus, right. the first thing they thought was, boy, Jesus is home, Jesus is here, but there's somebody we know that really needs a touch from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so they went and got their friend. That was how their yes. mind thought. Their mind thought, how can I get yes. to church so I can get a good yeah. seat? That's how right. they thought was, oh my gosh, we got Hank over here, and uh, we got to get Hank to meet Jesus so Jesus can help Hank. So they were late for church, and they brought Hank on a pallet, and then they uh, realized they couldn't get in there, and they couldn't get in the door. So they did something. They thought outside the box, and they thought creatively. They thought, well, let's go on the roof and tear the roof off and get him in that way. And that's what we have to do to get people to Jesus in our culture. We have to think creatively. And what happens is we're thinking we gotta go through the door, we do it the same way, we've done it the same way for 40 years, and, and if you're going to get people to Jesus, you have to think outside the box and do things creatively. You know, Michael, what about the guy that says, he's hearing this and he's saying, you know, I want to go into a community and I want to start a church. Maybe he's not springboarding off the church. Maybe it's I want to go. What, you know, what advice, you know, out of your experience, years of experience of church planning, planning several churches, if you had to go to them and say, hey, here's what I recommend. What are, what are two or three things that you would recommend for this, maybe this young leader that says, I really want to leave an impact in my community, you know, but I want to start afresh. What, what would you recommend to them? Well, over the years, uh, I've been blessed to plant churches a number of different ways. When we started our main church in Pennsylvania, uh, it was just my wife and I and my my two children going to our hometown and uh, we made a concerted effort not to draw from the churches that we had experience with you know growing up in that town uh, because we wanted to reach the lost that was our primary goal that's good uh, but we were just starting alone and and actually what I found that was the most difficult uh, way of doing it I've also planted churches uh, a number of times by sending a group of people out from the main church uh, under anointed leadership mm -hmm. and basically that's what Danny's doing uh, yes. there in Rehoboth Beach that's right and uh, as you heard him say already first night we have 120 people there wow. well my first service there were five of us there uh, actually there were six of us my my wife and I my two children my mm -hmm. mother and my sister you know <laughs> and so you can see that it's a it's a long way mm -hmm. 
uh, you know, starting from scratch versus starting with a, a group of people. And uh, uh, now Danny didn't do this. They did some word of mouth advertising and some minor advertising, but I've also started churches with uh, the approach of really launching it with a major advertising campaign and really letting people know uh, what we're doing and gathering a whole lot of people in and just uh, hoping to uh, uh, catch that wave, you know, so to speak, and ride that wave in, in reaching people. And that's, that's been very effective. So there are a number of ways. Uh, oh, I've also uh, sent out just a small team. And in fact, the last church that I planted, that's how we did it. We took, instead of sending out a large group of people, which can, uh, you know, if you're not careful, it can change the dynamics of the local church. And I know Pastor Dan's had to be, uh, you know, concerned with that. Uh, but, uh, you know, out of concern for that, we sent out just a small team to the last one and did a major launch with it. And it was very effective at gathering a lot of people in too. And so there are multiple ways to start a church. And, and the primary advice that I would give anybody is that you have to get your own vision for how God wants you yeah, to plant this good. church. That's right? good. And, that's uh, be but the, of but that's, the, that's, that's also right. the difficult part mm -hmm. because we're so prone to adopting how it's been done before. How, and, and of course that can go for the church planter who's done multiple churches well this is how we do it this is what works we're going to you know we're going to cookie cutter these churches and start them all this way and I, I think that's wrong uh, I think that each time we start a church we need to take it to the Lord and, and say okay Lord you know what is your plan that's for good. this church and then when you get the vision as to how to do it then you've got to put the blinders on because faith follows vision Bible says that um, uh, that faith comes by the hearing of the word, right? You know, and uh, and so we have to hear the word of the Lord. Faith follows vision. We we need to follow vision and not the circumstances, because the circumstances oftentimes try to dictate to us what we're going to do in any That's given right. situation. And if you follow the circumstances, you know, the lack of finances or what's this going to do to the local church? I can't give up my best associate pastor uh, to do this work. Uh, I, can't, uh, I can't divide my worship team. Oh, we've got this wonderful worship team, you know. And, you know, there's many times that circumstances will keep people right. from following the vision of the Lord. So That's you get the vision good. of the Lord, you've got to put the true. blinders on and, uh, and be willing to die in order to do the work of the Lord and to expand the kingdom of God.